getting you up and getting your sports day started. I mean, I could wear a good looking suit and I could speak eloquently for it on his behalf. This is the Morning Drive Podcast. And then you'll take your uh, remote and you'll push the button. Okay. And then magically the game will appear. Mm. From Double T 97.3. You can do your chatting uh, via the Double T 97.3 mobile app. It's presented by Happy State Bank. Uh, somebody asked, Chuck, are there water facilities at the Jones to fill your water bottles? There are, and you can take a 20-ounce unopened bottle of water into the stadium. Okay? Mm-hmm. So cool that thing down, and then uh, there's uh, refilling stations, which I think is just uh, just, awesome. makes, just makes it so easy, and it is awesome. It helps people keep hydrated um, and um, whatnot, so cooled off as well. So uh, take advantage of those uh facilities uh, tomorrow at Jones Stadium. They have them on, on the east side and on the west side. Uh, on the east side, it's like uh, over there by the student gate, okay? And so I'm not sure where they are on the west side, but I know they've got them. Got them all over the place, so uh, take advantage of that. Somebody asked uh, Coach McGuire yesterday if uh, if we had to worry about him uh, leaving for UT, much like Chris Beard did, and he said, it, it's, it's, not, it's no dream of mine <laughs> to be there. He goes, uh, he said, growing up, and he did not go to school here. He said, growing up, he said, uh, he had a friend who uh, who was a big Arkansas fan, and he, he would go to some Arkansas games. He said, I had a shirt that said, uh, I love Arkansas, whoever Texas is playing. <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, that got a, a big cheer. Uh, last week, I told you about his uh, golf suggestion uh, with regard to, um, you know, putting some Carmex on the head of the driver, which is illegal. I thought about doing that when I was playing golf with my uh, my brother and my nephew and my brother-in-law last weekend, but I, I did not. Um, I actually hit the ball pretty well for a guy I hadn't played all year. Uh, anyway, uh, my, and my, my brother and my nephew, they just absolutely crush it. They just crush it. But anyway, the, the point is, somebody <clears throat> anonymously, and I think it was, well, I know it was Coach McGuire's wife, uh, asked if anybody had done that, and then Coach McGuire had to admit that uh, swinging a golf club in your house is not a good idea because apparently he he didn't call it the china cabinet, but he was talking about the cabinet where the dishes are. Apparently he swung his club in his house and he he chipped it. Made a little contact, huh? <laughs> he made a little contact, yes. <laughs> so he's no longer allowed to swing his golf club in the house. Tough deal. Yes, you know, it's probably probably good for any of us to be in that situation not to swing your golf club in the house probably did your mom have a no throwing of balls and stuff like that in the house oh i'm sure we got in trouble for that a couple hundred times a couple hundred times right right uh somebody says this off of uh, the eighth flooring center chat line and and I, I, i guess it is biggest game in coach joey's career is saturday hashtag good luck hashtag wreck them i mean certainly for college i mean high school i mean yeah Obviously, played for state championships. Those were those were big games. Yeah, I think I think you'd have to say it is the biggest so far. Yeah, uh, your biggest concern tomorrow. Mm, uh, your offensive line against their defensive front. Can you can you provide some protection? Can you open up some holes? Can you? Um, be able to run the plays that you want to play or execute them the way that you want to execute them. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> all of those, all of those things. Um, let's see here. One of the couple of the things here, miles price was on last night. Um, coach McGuire's talked about how tough he is, his swagger. Um, uh, they talked about his, uh, picture of him and Tyree Wilson from, uh, media days. Uh, Tyree is like towering over, uh, Miles Price, but he said in Miles's mind he's as tall as Tyree. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that confidence, and he said he's tough. He plays the way uh, the game is supposed to be played. Talked about how he's a a great teammate. Takes on the personality of his coach, and um, anyway, so I thought that was uh, that was I thought that was good, and uh, and Miles was really you know well spoken last night, and. Uh, he, it was interesting. Um, he said this about Texas. He said, "All love, but have hate in my heart for him." <laughs> okay, 
I'll love, but I have hate in my heart for him. He also said that tomorrow will be the first time that he's played at home for a sellout. Okay. Okay, the last time that they played here was a COVID game, and there was only about, uh, is that right, 20? That would be two years ago. 2020 was the COVID game. I think the, I think the attendance that was listed for that game was like 16,000 mm-hmm. because, you know, it was limited to, to going in there. He, mm-hmm. said, uh, he said he still has a bad taste in his mouth about that game and that he's thought about it all week and um, wants to be, you know, part of a team that, that wins a game against him. Okay. So, I mean, got to remember those guys that were on the field. I mean, they, I'm sure they still think about – you know, the opportunity that was squandered that day, uh, in addition to, to fans and anybody that was there, you know, casual observers, but for the players on the field, uh, I thought that was interesting. Bad taste in my mouth. I thought about it all week. So how does that convert onto, uh, onto the field? The well, other- hopefully, and you would think the players are feeling the same way, maybe even more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, he also said this, and then I, you know, of course, went into my mind, started started thinking about it with regard to... Uh, Baron Morton and Donovan Smith he was asked about them and he said he said same plays same thing Um, you know with regard to you know it doesn't matter really which quarterback is throwing it's the same plays, same thing now I'm sure one throws the ball a little bit different than the other one and and if he mentioned that I didn't capture that but then I got to thinking about what we've talked about and like when we say there's a, a package for Morton or a package for Smith maybe maybe Jamie it just I'm, I'm just trying to to think here, and, and that sometimes gets me in trouble. But maybe it's Baron Morton runs this set of plays better than Donovan Smith runs this set of plays. In other words, maybe there's certain plays on a rollout or whatever, or maybe that he sees better than than Smith sees. And maybe that's what they're talking about when they talk about a package for Morton or a package for Smith. Possibly, as opposed to something that's just completely different since we hear all the time about well they're the same quarterback not the same quarterback but you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. the same type of quarterback yeah, both can move around a little bit both have strong arms but you know there's i mean there's always going to be some differences or whatever it feels like to me that morton was more like shock than he was like donovan smith okay okay yeah you're you're probably right about that uh robert says this biggest game this year there will be bigger games down the line reckon boy i hope so because there's bigger names down the line, then you're you're playing with more on the more on the line than just beating Texas. Sure, yeah. I mean, for the Red Raider fan base, this is. I mean, for the regular season, this is the one they probably want more than mm-hmm. any of them. Most of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, it it is the biggest game of the regular season. You know, unless you're playing the last game of the year, trying to get yourself into a bowl game or something like that. Yeah. Uh, 639 this morning here on the morning drive. Thoughts, comments, the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double T973.com for that or the mobile app. Benchmark Hotline is open as well. Other games in the Big 12 tomorrow. TCU plays at SMU. That'll be a battle of uh, DFW. That'll be in- interesting there at Gerald Ford Stadium, not Gerald R. <clears throat> Gerald R was a uh, Michigan football player and, of course, the president of the United States, appointed president of the United States, not elected. And then uh, Baylor plays at Iowa State. That is also an 11 a.m. kickoff. And this is shocking to me, uh, but Kansas announced a sellout at Memorial Stadium tomorrow. Great. So I don't know if they put them at a buck a clock or if they uh, you know, had a big remote somewhere and handed out a bunch of tickets or if people actually bought them. But uh, Duke and Kansas will play tomorrow at 11 a.m. And then the night game tomorrow night after Texas Tech at Texas is Kansas State at Oklahoma. And I did not realize this. I did not go back and do the, the work on this. The Tech Talk boys did. Last five years, K-State is 3-2 and two against Oklahoma. Yeah, they always seem to give them a lot of trouble. Yeah. A lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, uh, besides obviously the Red Raiders in Texas, the the TCU-SMU game is the one in the Big 12 that I'm most interested yeah, in this yeah, week. Yeah, that's, uh, it'll be, uh, that, that should be fun. Uh, I'll bet you that'll be a, a big house uh, at SMU. Uh, tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Getting you up and getting your sports day started. That's me, man. Wow. Highly, you know. Impressive. <laughs> this is the Morning Drive Podcast. I'm like the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Because your kids don't want moms? My, 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 my oldest is a senior, and I think we... 
I think we made it through without paying for a single mom. Wasn't the guy supposed to pay for the mom? Oh, I don't know. From Double T 97.3. September 23rd, 2022. Time for the stay in sports history. Here is Jeff McGuire. An overused phrase, you know, fight of the century, comeback of the century, sure. whatever the mm-hmm. situation is. I kind of feel like I like this one, though, from 1926. Because you're at least halfway through it at this point. It's the upset of the decade. <laughs> Gene Turney beats defending champion Jack Dempsey by 10 rounds in a unanimous decision at what would later be known as JFK Stadium in Philadelphia for the world heavyweight boxing title. They at least gave it a chance to have, you know, we think we've seen the best one now as opposed to like 19, you know, sure. 1904. It's the battle of the century. It's 1904, <laughs> man. We got lots of time to see yeah. something better. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. 1933, Major League Baseball's New York Yankees commit five errors, three of them by their shortstop, but they still beat the Red Sox, 16-12 to 12 at Fenway Park. That's all that matters. 1937, Yankees lose 9-5, to five, but clinch when the Red Sox beat Detroit. Hmm. 1955, Yankees clinch the pennant by beating the Red Sox 3-2. to two. Trying to Get some positive mojo for your Yankees this weekend there, Jamie. Well, they clinched a playoff berth last night against the Red Sox. 1979, Major League Baseball St. Louis Cardinal legend. And then I probably needed to say Sir Lou Brock because Gustafson is listening and I don't want to get yelled at again. He stole his 938th and final career base. Hmm. 1984, one of my favorite guys to root for, Sparky Anderson, is the first manager to win 100 games in both leagues. They'd, hard go, not. To win, they'd go on to win the World Series that year, too. It's hard not to root for Sparky Anderson. 1988, Jose Canseco is baseball's first person to steal 40 bases and hit 40 home runs. And in 1997, the Seattle Mariners break the record for most home runs in a year with 258, a record that is now broken by the All-Star Game by every team in baseball. (laughs) (laughs) It is National White Chocolate Day. Occasionally. I mean, it's like, I don't seek it. How about that? The white chocolate macadamia nut cookie is 1B for me. 1B? No. Oatmeal raisin is 1A. 1A. Okay. Yeah. Happy birthday. Former Red Raider. Stephen Gingry turns 25 today. Cali. Uh, coming up on Sunday... Former Lady Raider Alicia Robertson, 38. Back to today, Anthony Mackey is 44. The Boss, Bruce Springsteen, 73. Jason Alexander, 63. Matt Kemp, 38. Jabba Chamberlain, 37. Or I should say Jabba Chamberlain, excuse me, 37. John Harbaugh, 60. And Marvin Lewis is 64. And on this day in 1864, German astronomer, astronomer, astronomer that's not the hard one to say jeff jonathan gottfried gal discovers the planet neptune at the berlin observatory neptune generally the eighth planet from the sun was postulated by french astronomer eubain Jos- joseph lear vayner no way i got that right who, cal- <laughs> who calculated uh the approximate location of the planet by studying gravity induced disturbances in the motions around uranus on September 23rd, 1864, Lavere informed Gal of his findings, and that same night, Gal and his assistant identified Neptune in their observatory, noting its movement relative to background stars over 24 hours, and confirmed that it was a planet. In 1989, U.S. planetary, planetary spacecraft Voyager 2 was the first human spacecraft to visit Neptune. And that is this day in sports history. Right, so day. happy birthday, Neptune. No, yeah, why Neptune? Why, why, did, why did they call it something else? Well, because it's the god of the sea, and it was that far out, is what the perception was. And that's also why Pluto got Pluto's name, because it, it's the underworld. It's not because it has big ears? No, not be, or because he's a good Disney character. Okay. <sighs> okay. Uh, this is uh, 
this is going to be interesting tonight. Did you know, and you 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 probably know this, um, tonight's Yankee game is not on conventional television. It's not on the Yes Network. Correct. It's only on uh, Apple TV Plus. Um, uh, the Yankees offered to uh, facilitate a trade, uh, offering up Michael Kay, David Cohn, and Paul O'Neill, their uh, announcers, uh, to put them on the uh, broadcast Uh, so far apple and major league baseball has declined this has been done this was done a long time ago uh there was hope that michael k would be in play for a loaner deal that would make him part of the broadcast if roger maris were to you know be at this point where he would hit his 61st or 62nd home run which is where he is as of last night uh k told uh, the website uh front office sports he would not be part of the apple tv plus streaming broadcast citing a desire not to upstage apple's usual play-by-play announcer steven nelson so that's that's a class act on his part sure uh and i hope he's rewarded by judge not hitting a home run tonight (laughs) (laughs) uh he he said k said when i first learned of this at first blush i would feel very uncomfortable taking the assignment away from someone else that's the right thing to do and uh, he understands that. Like I said, this was set in play a long time ago, um, but uh, it is it is unfortunate. And then I th- and then I got to thinking about Hank Aaron in 1974 um, when he hit a home run, and they were on the road their opening season. They op- they opened up at Cincinnati, and they wanted him to break the record in Atlanta. And so they sat him for a couple of games. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, okay, well, you know, I guess if the Yankees were playing on the road, they could say, well, we're going to sit, Judge. But that would be, that karma might come back to haunt you because you don't want to be in a position where you take games away from a guy and then he comes up short at the end of the, at the, end of the year. Yeah, you're also in a pennant race. Yeah. Trying to win the division. Yeah. You know, you haven't clinched the division. Yeah. You, I mean, no need to be worried about personal records you're right trying to win games right 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 so you're, just, you're getting close to clinching but still I, th- I thought that was uh thought that was interesting so um there'll be a, a big uproar when uh lots of yankee fans can't see this game tonight <clears throat> so um it's a it's a it's unfortunate but that's just the way it is it's, it's kind of how it how how it goes sometimes mm-hmm. that's the way baseball go right I guess so. In guess this situation, so. it does. Yeah, but you don't want to sit him. Uh, and you you brought this up to me yesterday. No, uh, way. no way do you sit him. You brought this up to me yesterday. The The, the missing story here is his pursuit of uh, a triple crown. Possibly, yeah. I mean, he's right there with Xander Bogarts of the Red Sox is for the batting average lead. But, yeah, I mean, it, it could potentially be... Uh, you know, have a historic season with the home runs and win the triple crown. But I, I read yesterday where Buster Olney says he thinks it's the greatest offensive season in the history of baseball. I mean, wow. to do those historic home run mm-hmm. numbers. And um, I mean, he's got, I don't even know what the number is now, like 20 more home runs than anybody else in baseball. I mean, he's just blowing away the field. While also winning the triple crown. I mean, I'm not looking back to every sure <laughs> year in Major League Baseball history, but to hear Buster Olney say that, yikes! I mean, he's a credible source. I mean, he's, sure. a, guy, he's a guy that probably has looked back at every mm-hmm. season or could could cite some stuff uh, that would that would give. He's got you know, tons of credibility uh, along those lines. So yeah, so uh, could be uh, could be a really historic year. Um, for him as well but man i sure thought last night jamie uh, especially in the late stages of that game and it was all set up but uh and there was one swing that he took that man if he had connected that ball would have flown out of the bronx last night <laughs> well that's you gotta make contact you gotta make contact. <laughs> get hard at a home run if you he's, swing through he's, a... <laughs> he swung underneath the, he swung underneath the ball just yeah. just by a skosh but boy if he had connected it would have been long. It would have been high. It would have been gone. It would have been a home run. That's but would have been fair. Sterling would have called. I, you know that's that's the that call. Is, it is long. It is far. It is fair. Yeah. It, no, it's 
It is high. It is long. It is fair. It is, it's a home run. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Jamie, long, long, far, fair. Uh, there's a far in there. I don't think there's a fair in there. I think the last thing is gone. Gone. But anyway, at any rate, it would have been out of the park. Whether it would have been fair or foul, I don't know. But where he connected and how far he swung through it, right? But uh, he took a big swing at it, no doubt. Big plays and even bigger laps. If they get seven out of those two things, game over. Mm-hmm. You're not. You're not winning. You're not winning that game. At, at all. This is the Morning Drive Podcast. Uh, basketball players who don't wear the same stick, shoes. The shoes that right. match the uniform. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Match the color scheme of the, <laughs> the team they play for. From Double T 97.3. The Ace Morning Center chat line is open. Go to Double T 97.3.com for that. The mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. Benchmark Hotline is open as well. Uh, just a couple of notes before we go back to things. Uh, if you're a subscriber of The Athletic or if you have means of way to get to it, uh, just and I have not had time to go through all of it. I've been reading kind of highlights of it. Great, great article on uh, on Jay Young and Ray Hayward. Uh, the relationship between those two and Coach Hayward's um, you know, recovery uh, from a heart transplant and a kidney transplant and just kind of the gives you a behind-the-scenes look at, at what he went through and how it affected the team and and uh, and just the relationship that uh, he has with uh, his players and and uh, everything that's involved. So it's a it's a tremendous read. I yesterday during the scrimmage went and sat down with Coach Hayward, and I had read the story yesterday as well. I mean, I, I knew some of it, but not all of that. And sat down with coach Hayward yesterday and if you've ever met coach Hayward I mean he's um a a guy that is so much about how are you you know how's your family how's everything else I mean a positive and just inspirational guy because he's such a positive person and sitting down with him yesterday and, you know, I, I didn't really, I wasn't there to get into the story with him. Um, but it was so awesome to see him again. I, I had not seen him in person s- since all of this had happened and sat down with him and started talking. And uh, it was very obvious that he wants to tell the story not about Chase, but the story of what he went through. And again, he's not a guy that's normally talking about himself, but he wanted to tell the story because it's an amazing story of, you know, not giving up and uh, keeping his faith and, um, you know, feeling so much like, a higher being was there and helping him along the way. Um, it, it was, I, I talked to him for, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes, whatever. And um, it, it, it was hard for me not to, you know, tear up as I'm sitting there talking to him just because I know how close he was to being gone. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just, you know, it, it is a, a great story of just, man, just keep fighting, keep battling. And, Boy, he gives so much credit to his wife and what she went through. He's, I mean, in Coach Hayward type humor, he goes, "I was asleep for most of it." <laughs> he was out for three weeks. <laughs> He's out like, for "She's three weeks. She's the one that had to listen to the doctor say uh, your husband has about a five percent chance to live. Yeah. Live. She's the one that had to hear doctors say, "I'm not sure why we're doing this. Um, he's not going to make it." And he's like, "I was asleep for all that. I didn't have to hear those things." And uh, just, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to pull that whole greatest guy you'll ever meet because mm-hmm. I haven't met all of them, mm-hmm. but he's one of the best I've ever met, okay? And, I mean, he it just, you know, of course he's got a different perspective on everything. He, he, was, he was one of the things he's told me is, you know, as a player at Oklahoma and then in the big leagues, I had a year where I was injured. And it made, and he said it, it was great for me both times because it made me appreciate what I had. Like, oh man, I really miss playing this game. 
And so now to hear him talk about, he goes, it's, this was kind of the same thing, except it's not about baseball. It's not just about baseball. It kind of is, you know, he loves his job and loves being at the ballpark, Mm -hmm. but it's like everything else in life. I appreciate everything now because man, I didn't know if I was going to have it again, you know, and he's got grandkids and I mean, he loves coming to the yard and he's got a wife and I mean, kids and all, all the above and friends. And I just, man, I just, it was inspiring to sit there and listen to him and, I tell you this story because it affected me and I would love for it to affect other people the way it just made me think, man, appreciate what you have. He's like, you never know. He goes, we thought it was a normal surgery. I was going to be there for a few days and I was going to be back home. He goes, you just never know when you're going to lose it all. Appreciate what you have and don't take it for granted. And I mean, he's just an awesome guy. I, I mean, he's an awesome guy. If you ever get to meet him and get to know him, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And, uh, I mean, he, I walked away, I felt like I walked away from that 30 or 45-minute conversation feeling like, man, um, I got it better than I think I have it, mm-hmm. and I need to appreciate it, like he says. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's just an awesome guy and so glad to see that he's doing a lot better. Yeah, and in uh, like I said, it's a it's a great read. I haven't had a chance to read all of it yet. I had I started it and then and then I started it again. But w- one of the things that stood out was one of what one of the doctors said in this article about how with transplant patients, and he had both his heart and his kidney transplanted because when his heart went wonky and they had to put him on machines, it caused his kidney to fail, and so they they had to do both. <clears throat> they did one and then they did the other. They talked about how he would get out of bed and sit in a chair every day. And the doctor said, you, you don't see that with transplant patients. And, but basically his health and his strength that probably he built up over the years of A, playing, mm-hmm. and then B, you know, post-career, because uh, he would throw batting practice uh, to these guys when he was a coach. Um, you know, just stamina and all those, all those things took care of himself is what help save his life yeah sure and i think that was one of the reasons that i think he mentioned that one of the doctors is like this guy's a former athlete he's he's been a high level athlete and his personality is is a is a fighter and Mm -hmm. and that's why this guy's gonna figure out a way to survive you know that's why that particular doctor had faith that he could come through it when others thought they were wasting their time yeah the perseverance i mean just like and like you said the the perspective of um Hey, you got it better than most. You know, we all do. We all do. I mean, I felt like he was telling me the story. Just me individually. I felt like he was telling me the story or or he was sent to me by a higher power to say, appreciate what you have in life. Mm -hmm. Okay. You just don't know, you know, bad mood because of this or that or whatever. And it's like, man, you just don't know how good you have it. You kind of walked know. away from that going, man, I got no problems. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. I walked away from it just thrilled that uh, that I consider Ray Hayward somebody that I can talk to every once in a while. Because oh, cool. that made me, I mean, I just thought it was a great conversation. Cool. He's, he's a great dude. Well, thanks for thanks for sharing that. 7.23 mm-hmm. this morning here on the morning drive, Red Raider 2 Guns. Uh, you get caught up in the rat race and don't have a chance to pull your head out and take a breath. Every, every once in a while, you need to uh, you need to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this Coach Hayward is the living embodiment of the Texas Tech spirit and what it means to be a Red Raider. Yeah, no, I I I, I think all all of that. Um, this from Syntax uh, Hank. Y'all need to add a segment, Jamie's rant, where he just gets to unload because when he gets passionate, it's good radio. And I, yes, I use third person intentionally. Jamie's rant. Jamie's rant. <laughs> Jamie's rant. Now we just have Jamie's questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody's cooking ribeyes and Rocky Mountain oysters. I am in on the ribeyes, out on the Rocky Mountain oysters. Yeah, I'll eat, I'll take care of a ribeye, but yeah. uh, I'm not. You're not doing anything that, that slimy. He's not going in my mouth. <laughs> no, I'm with you <laughs> on that. Uh, bris- eat brisket, drink whiskey, watch back porch. Game day, 100. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Good. 7:24 this morning here on the morning drive. Uh, so how'd the team look? Oh, good. Good. I mean, you've got a bunch of guys out there, and they're, yeah. they're 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 trying to put it all together, right? It's a big old. 
puzzle. Mm-hmm. I was excited about Brendan Gurton, you know, back from, you know, being having a little bit of arm struggles at the end of the year and missed, obviously missed most of the season. And uh, he was out there as the st- first guy yesterday, and uh, he was popping the mitt and looking trim and fit. And I think he's definitely got a chance to be one of your weekend guys. Popping the mitt. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> popping the mitt. Yeah. His velocity looked good. They didn't have the gun going, but, you know, it looked look, look like it was good and fast. Good and fast. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Recapping yesterday while looking ahead to today's sports day, this is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. Okay, your uh, pregunta, por favor, senor. Oui, oui. <laughs> I try to come up with something a little bit different each day for you. Thanks, thanks. So it doesn't become so monotonous. And I try to do that with the questions, too. Uh-huh. And that plays into, we've had a ton of Red Raider football questions of late, understandably so. That's okay. the topic that's on most of our minds yep. most of the time. Uh, And I know there's a big game tomorrow, but I'm actually going to go away from the Red Raider football team. Okay. Okay. Fire away. Um, This, because of one of my favorite athletes of all time, will play his final professional match this weekend in Roger Federer. Mm -hmm. And I look at Federer and I say, man, I wish I could have seen him play in person. So if you could go back in time, maybe it's Mm -hmm. somebody that's retired or maybe it's somebody that has passed Mm -hmm. you could go back in time and pick any athlete to go back and watch compete in person Mm -hmm. that you never got to who would you like it to be uh uh, you know i'll I'll just say this my boyhood hero lynn dawson i never saw him play in person my 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 parents were not uh wealthy um and i went to my first chiefs game i think on a either a press pass or a, on a, I think on a press pass. Uh, I never saw him play at Municipal Stadium where he played the majority of his games. He played, I think he retired in 75 and Chiefs moved into Arrowhead in 72. But I never got to see him play in person. So I, I would I would say, I would say Lenny the Cool. I, would, I never saw him play in person. Heard all his games on the radio, saw, saw a lot of them on TV, uh, mm-hmm. but never saw him in, in person. So that's what I'd say. You'd think I would say Bo Jackson here. I've seen a million highlights. I've seen live uh, games on TV. He could go 0 for 4 in the game I show up, and that might break my heart. A player that I never got to see in person, there's two that immediately come to mind that I would love to have watched. Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky. The consistency that both of those two guys brought to every single game they played, you knew you were seeing greatness in their respective sports every single game. I would have loved to have seen that once. Okay, uh, I, those are those are good answers. I, I've been lucky enough, I think, for most of my guys to have seen all of them for the most part. When it comes to the Jim Kellys and Dave mm-hmm. Winfields and Tony Kukoc's and Derek Jeter and those guys, I was able to to go and watch play um, Agassi. I got to see Agassi play, but the guy for me is is still playing and that's Rafael Nadal. I mean, I would love to see Nadal play. So, I still got a shot. I don't have many years left, but right. I got to figure out a way at some point to get it done, but um yeah, I just think there's there's other guys that I think of that I just think would have been really cool to see like two baseball guys for me I mean, just because you hear how amazing athlete that athletes they were as Willie Mays and, and Jackie Robinson, okay? Um, those would be two guys that are really high, would be really high on my list, okay? I mean, obviously Robinson because of the history and all of that kind of, but I mean, Willie Mays, I mean, you just look at his numbers and you see mm-hmm. some of the highlights. He, Mays, to me, looks like an athlete. You don't look at Babe Ruth and say, oh man, he could be good today. But I look at Willie Mays when I see his highlights, I'm like, that dude could play. He could play now. He looks like that good of an athlete. So I would have loved to have seen Willie Mays play. 
Yeah, my only memory of uh, Willie Mays, and we didn't get, you know, in those days, you didn't have very, very many uh, games. You had the game of the week. And, um, you know, when he got traded to the Mets and then played in the in the, in the the World Series his last year, he was a shell of his former self. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my only memory of Willie Mays. I did get to see Hank Aaron play. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that was really cool. I would have loved to have seen Roberto Clemente play. Okay, so that's a that's a really good one. Um, you know, I would have um, <clears throat> from you know, a, from a basketball uh, standpoint, I saw Michael Jordan play before before he won any championships. Uh, basketball for me, I would have loved to have seen Pistol Pete Maravich mm-hmm. play. Okay, mm-hmm. I would have loved to have seen him. But I mean, he just looks so like he was so much fun to watch. Okay, and Magic is the other one. I, I've never, mm-hmm. I Did never saw Magic, Magic play. play in person. Um, I don't know football for me. I don't know if there are any quarterbacks or wide receivers that jump out to me that say, "Oh man, I would have wanted to." I, I mean, I appreciate their skill level and all that. They're just not individually as exciting to me as like a superstar NBA player or Ken Griffey Jr. who can who was fun to watch. Barry know, would make. have been fun to watch. Who? Barry Sanders. Oh yeah, that's another good one. That, that, yeah. That, the, yeah. Because yeah. of what his the quick step ability that he had yeah. and the juke yeah. and making people miss. Emmett was a, a pounder basically and and had holes open that you could drive the Titanic through. So I mean, he was very skilled, style. but he just wasn't like the yeah. human highlight reel that was Barry, Barry Sanders. Sanders. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really good one. Yeah, that's a really good one. I saw Marcus Dupree play in college, uh, and he was a guy that should have been a great NFL player. He mm-hmm. he tore up a knee and then got sour with Oklahoma, and then it was ne- it was was never the NFL player that um, Barry Sanders was. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he had uh, electricity, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of uh, the other Spe- thing. You- Go ahead. Speaking of uh, going way back on some players, how about Gail Sayers? Just the highlights from that, the phenomenal run, Bears running back that he was, I would have loved to have seen that in person too, just mm-hmm. to experience what that was like and what he could do to defenses. Oh. Very similar to Barry Sanders in that kind of way, but mm-hmm. a little, a lot more speed in mm-hmm. straight line. Mm-hmm. Uh, your thoughts? Uh, here's uh, here's some from uh, the Eight Morning Center chat line. Robert says uh, Mickey Mantle. Robert is a uh, big Yankee mm-hmm. fan. Man, that would have been a good one. That would have been a good one in his highlight. Mm-hmm. Uh, this I'm with Jamie on Pistol Pete. The few highlights that exist are electric. I mean, he just looks like everything yep. was so much fun. Yeah. Um, uh, George Gervin, because somebody says the Ice Man oh, for yeah. the for the San Antonio Spurs. Man, yeah, that's a good one. Or Dr. J. Or Dr. J. Yeah. Uh, Dale Earnhardt, Randy Moss, uh, Payne Stewart. I've seen Earnhardt. Uh, this uh, from Centex Inc. Johnny Unitas. When Dad was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia, I love Johnny U. And he was a guy that I mean he was he could he could sling it sure he could sling sure. it you know if you wanted to say a guy from that era as well you could say um, you could say uh, uh, Joe Namath mm-hmm. uh, our man uh, Dutch says he got to see two time Heisman Trophy winner Archie Griffin play at Ohio State mm. uh, Earl Campbell yeah he I was a to- beast. Well, that's funny you mentioned them. I I got to interview those two back to back within about a ten minute period. Once I never saw either one of them play in person. Uh, Archie Manning or Archie Griffin and Earl Campbell back to back. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, somebody brings up Muhammad Ali. I would have loved to have seen Muhammad Ali box. I think that would have been. I think that would have been the. I think first of all, the event itself would have been spectacular. Sure. You know, just the, mm-hmm. because in those days, I mean, the, it was a true star of stars, actresses and actors and just celebrities and just every, everything. Um, somebody says Patrick Mahomes, okay. <laughs> I'd like to see him play in person in the, in the NFL. You know, uh, a question that I have for Mahomes is, <laughs> one question I have for Mahomes for, from his Chiefs career is, the first AFC Championship game that he played in, that, that my wife and I went to, uh, and and right before they kicked the field goal, there were still a few seconds left, and I, I I just would like to know if he did you did you try to get one more play out of Andy Reid because going down the left side, Tyreek Hill was just it seemed like all Patrick had to do was flick it because it seemed like he was burning those defensive backs, and could they have scored a touchdown? 
as opposed to settling for the field goal to go to overtime. I almost wonder if the Mahomes today would say, uh, if that happened today, it's like, hey, I want one more play, and he would have that trust factor with his coach. But maybe so. You know, in those days, I mean, they hadn't won a Super Bowl in you know forty something years, and you know, you have a chance to kick and go to overtime, and then see, take your chances. He never got his chance in the overtime because Brady drove down and scored a touchdown. The defense just couldn't get a stop. Oh, that's a, that was a fun question. Uh, somebody says, uh, Walter Payton, yes, best running oh, yeah. back of all time. That would have been fun, too. Recapping yesterday while looking ahead to today's sports day. But I'll bet you many of his coaches probably haven't. They're like, who is this? What is this Mayberry that you speak of, right? This is the Morning Drive Podcast. Sign me up. <laughs> Get your popcorn ready. <laughs> From Double T 97.3. So Harold in the shotgun. From the 28. The throw goes to the right side for Crabtree. It's caught. Oh he breaks. Oh, oh he's going to oh, the Red Raiders. Unbelievable. Touchdown. Oh, 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 Red Raiders. Michael Crabtree has done it. This is the morning drive on Double T 97.3 and Fox 34 News Now. Well, if that doesn't send a little chill up your spine, you might want to call 911 and uh, have the EMS uh, come over to your house or place of business or pull over to the side of the road never gets old but uh it's been too long since uh you had a victory over texas because that was the last time in 2008 on no november the first jeff you could have made like a really cool montage you know our stations are big into the montages <laughs> uh you that's under uh, copyright infringement you could have come up that. with a really cool montage with that play and the little people big world play and Kurt Wilson two mm. times, I, uh, and Zach Davis, and Keenan Evans. Uh, all of these, all of these were would be we, great. We we, make we long couldn't call it a montage weep. though, because that's under copyright. We on, could on call it like three minutes of freaking greatness. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep your montage word. We will just call it awesome, heaven. Is the montage still a thing? I, I just, I haven't heard it lately. Is it still a thing on the end of the bench? I, I, I'm not really sure. Okay. I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I catch them pretty occasionally. Um, mm. I haven't caught any... Like uh, a cold or a rash? <laughs> no, <I'm>, <laughs> no, I just haven't left my office in the early portion of the morning <laughs> to be able to, to catch a choice and, and hacks. <laughs> Yeah, I hear it's going around these days. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. And I've I've missed I think I've missed every take versus take this week. So I've been I don't know, busy at certain at key times. It's disappointing. Yeah, it is it's disappointing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't believe I you missed not, yesterday's. It was fantastic. Yeah, I, I did miss yesterday's. I guess it's not growing as fast as everybody <laughs> says it is. Well, I mean, you know. It's mm-hmm. getting, like a fungus. Jamie may have asked the best questions ever in yesterday's take versus take. Uh, well, I get this from the head man of the end of the bench. Uh, Jeff Haxton says, yes, play it. Permission granted. <laughs> no, I need that in writing and in triplicate. I have it right I here. It. I have it right here via the text. Or as, uh, I, don't, is it I don't want that montage. I want my version that I have just, you know, way late to the party asked for. You know, a little prep work ahead of time. Probably if I'd told Jeff yesterday, he'd have been all ready for us. Okay. But now here I am on the fly. Hey, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> hey, there's 50 minutes left in the show, Jeff. What are you doing with your life over there? I, I know it wasn't the last win against TU, but it was the last win in Lubbock. Okay. You know, so semantics. Semantics. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, that's that's accurate. That's accurate. That wasn't our last win. Uh, do you want it's something that I saw this morning that was, I guess it was kind of surprising, surprising to me when you consider that in uh, the all-time streak here, uh, Texas has won 54 times and Texas Tech has won 17 times. But do you know what the longest streak has been for Texas? I do not. Eight. It doesn't seem like that long. I mean, I, I wasn't here for those eight because it was, uh, I think, in the 60s. But Oh, you mean in a row. They yeah. won eight in a row. Yeah, eight in a row. Oh, okay. I thought you when meant... When you've won 54, 
it just seems like you would have had a longer run than eight. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not real sure. Okay. So lost here at home two years ago, 63 to 56 in front of 16,615. You know, 10 years from now, somebody's going to look at it and go, why were there only 16,000 people there? Well, that was COVID. Mm-hmm. That was COVID. But I'm mm-hmm. sure that there's about 50,000 people that are like, God, I mean, I left that game so mad. There was only 16,000 16, there that 000. day? Mm-hmm. That's the listed attendance. 16,615. Okay, that's the listed listed attendance. Um, last time you won was uh, November 24th of 2017, 27 23, in front of 100,629 at DKR. There you go. That was, that was the day I ultimately admitted to myself that I am the ultimate pessimist. <laughs> that day, 20. 20- <laughs> two years ago that oh, was the day ago. when yeah. after Sir Roderick went up the left sideline and scored mm-hmm. I looked to my friends and said man this is really going to hurt when we blow this uh, somebody says there was way more than that but Tech couldn't post more because of COVID rules uh, yeah, okay. I, I okay. can totally I, believe I, that I, I can too I can, yeah, I can totally I believe can that uh, eight years is two graduating classes freshman to senior who never saw a Tech win over UT seems long to me okay yeah. 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 That's that, that's that, a good way to put it. That's fair. That's a that is a good way to that is a good way to put it. Um Texas Tech will win if what happens, Jamie. Um I don't know if you can I do I only get one answer? No, uh, I tell you you can have one offensive answer and one defensive answer. You Hold down their run game. Do you think it has to be less than 200 yards? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I I agree. Much less. Much less? Like less than 150? Yep. Really? Yep. And because it's not like they can't throw the football. No, I know. I know. know. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's got to be like 140-ish or below. Mm. And you have to not turn the ball over. See... I, I think the the last thing that you said there is just absolutely spot on. You just cannot afford to turn the ball over. I think that you probably could give up more than 140. I don't think you can give up more than 200. And and then we'll get in, we'll get into a score here in about 30 minutes in terms of what you think the score is going to be. But uh, you just clearly cannot turn the ball over like you have the last couple of weeks because there. I think that will. And then I wonder, you know, what what does the home crowd game, do for you? Any game the rest of the season. Yeah. You cannot turn the ball over the way you had the last two mm-hmm. weeks. Unless you're getting a bunch of turnovers back. But so far you haven't been able to do that. Right. Any game the rest of the season. Uh, when you're minus three. Right? Have we been minus three the last two weeks? Oh, yeah. Probably so. Each time? Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know off yeah. the top of my head. Okay, close to it. You're not going to win a single game the rest of the way no. if you go minus three in those games. No. Um. Okay. So. So far, you've thrown. So far, uh, you've thrown seven interceptions on the year. You're. You've only got one. You must have been just minus two this past week, right? No. No, that's not right because the fum- the muffed punt too. Yeah. Muff punt, three interceptions. They had the one fumble out of the side of the end zone. Uh, te- is, is that the only one? Texas, uh, I don't have the play-by-play sheet in front of me. Yeah. Te- Texas Tech has, has recovered two fumbles. The opponent has fumbled it three times. Texas Tech has fumbled it five times, and the opponent has recovered it once. The well, Houston game, I know you threw three picks. I thought you had an interception there as well. I don't remember if there was any fumbles in the Houston game. I don't think there was. I think, it, I think you had the interception. Like Feels like a month and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, this question, what's more important for this game, total yards rushing or yards per carry? <laughs> total yards mm-hmm. rushing. Total yards rushing. Yeah, I think you're right about that. You've been listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. For more from Lubbock Sports Station, go to double T 973com